Hello folks, and before we get into the video proper, let's do a bit of trivia, shall we? Now, this particular trivia question is wholly pedantic. I admit that completely. However, I think it needs to be said. So the question is this. Oh, it relates to awards. So the question is this. In the United States, there are gold discs, platinum discs, and then for the very highest sales, the lesser spotted diamond discs. Don't know if you've seen those. Strictly speaking, this is wrong because diamond is not a metal. And after all, we're talking a run of metals, aren't we? The discs really should be named after which metal? The only one more precious than platinum. What is that metal? So yes, slightly different for a music trivia quiz, but nevertheless, related. Anyway, over to the music video, the music magazine. Welcome to this week's Music Magazine, and we are looking at some vinyl news, and we're also, well, we're also looking at a, a book, just one book review for you this time around. But to begin with, well, let's look at vinyl reviews. First up, we've got Horace Andy and the King Tubby Tapes from the UK audiophile label Demon. Now, Horace Andy has an iconic voice in Jamaican reggae with his light, soul-inflected delivery. His voice was easy on the ear, so it helped him to offer a relative broad appeal. It was also an important ingredient in his 70s output, which was mighty indeed, producing hits by the bucket load, while his more recent work saw him appear within trip-hop classics like Massive Attack's debut LP, Blue Lines. This collection includes artists such as Robbie Shakespeare, Carlton Santa Davis, Tony Chin, and Bernard Touter Harvey. In mastering terms, Demon has had to struggle a little with a restated dynamic reach, which has caused pinch treble response and rolled off mids. Nevertheless, the label has done a sterling job. The sound stage is, well, it's relatively wide, and there's a wealth of information on offer here, while the bass is suitably weighty and hefty, even though at times it can feel well, it's being pushed a little too far, but in many ways that's the nature of the genre. And so I have a feeling that effect occurred at the source. Despite the slightly limited extended detail, the basic mid-band region is packed with information. It's still there. While there's still some air around this area, so the information in this part of the frequency spectrum, well, there's still space to wander. We last saw this compilation initially spread over two CDs in 2002 on the Jet Star label, which was in itself largely the album Pure Ranking from 1979 with added tracks. Alongside that was a vinyl version released by Charm also in 2002, losing two tracks, Modern Dub and Modern Babylon. What Demon has done is to replicate that charm release. Even so, I'm still happy that Demon went to the effort of giving us two instead of, for example, a new heavily edited single disc here to save cash. So, well done, Demon. Now for our second vinyl review, another compilation. This one from Echo and the Bunnymen, Songs to Learn and Sing from Warners. Now in terms of vinyl reviews for these videos, I don't really cover too many hits packages, but I thought I'd make an exception with this release because it appeared in and amongst the band's first flush of success. In this case, it was released in 1985 and packed in 12 tracks that showed their impact on the times and how they had carved an area in the musical space when faced with the competition from the likes of the Smiths, New Order and Depeche Mode. Let's take Nothing Away From The Band as a unit because 
Most groups experience success because of the band as a collective. But of course, special mention has to be given to the remarkable vocal abilities of lead singer Ian McCulloch, who managed to lift his voice to almost cinematic levels in terms of pure creative drama. There were moments when he could instill a cup of awe into the Bunnymen canon with his shifting octaves. Meanwhile, Will Sargent's sparkling guitar work lifted the songs towards symphonic highs at times. This is a neat collection of songs because it spans 1980 to 1985 and because it appeared on the shelf in 1985, it also draws a line of sorts. It's a statement, a conclusion to a burst of creativity, if you will. As for the mastering on this one, well, there is a real 3D effect around the stereo image that's beautifully transparent in terms of allowing detail from the rear of the mix to find its way to the ear. There is a slight, and I mean a slight, note of compression around the upper mids, but it never really gets in the way. The album track, Bring on the Dancing Horses, was featured on the soundtrack for the film Pretty in Pink in 1986, and that's included here as a bonus. And now, a book review. going for Marillion, but one particular Marillion person, Mark Kelly. This book is called Marillion Misadventures and Marathons, and as I say, it's by Mark Kelly, published by King Maker for £24.99p last time I looked, and you're looking at 258 pages. Keyboard player for the neo-prog band Marillion, Kelly gives us his autobiography from childhood, family, and friends, from tales of bullies at school to bullies in the workplace, his political and social views, and more. But it's his work with Marillion that really holds the attention. We travel through the creative process, the parties, and also the tensions. The interpersonal relationships are the most fascinating of all, and that's no surprise, especially when the band's ex-lead singer, Fish, was involved. I found the later discussion of how a band survives on its own, in partnership with its own fan base, interesting indeed. Marillion, of course, were one of the pioneers of what would later be termed crowdfunding. Their early forays into this new mechanic are an interesting read, and it's a tale of how the fans can infuse their heroes and can give them the energy to carry on. There's nothing like feeling loved, it seems. Even prog bands need it. This is a highly enjoyable book. And we'll end this video with a host of vinyl news. We are initially looking at the fish heads and the songs from the fish heads. This is a 45 RPM 7 inch single covering two tracks. And when I say covering, I mean they feature covers of The Monkeys' Pleasant Valley Sunday and Chet Powers' Peacenik Ditty Let's Get Together. Beautifully retro and packed full of flower chains, this release oozes sunshine and the howl of innocence. Next up we have Jamiroquai and the man with the incredibly irritating hats. Travelling Without Moving is the album in question from Sony. The album took acid jazz and pop to a fine point and then unleashed the result, resulting in, well, a one-group phenomenon. Incredibly hook-laden songs, a sprightly delivery, and yes, those irritatingly large and squishy hats. 
Next up, we have Bonobo and the album Fragments on Ninja Tune, a UK record label. This one features 12 tracks supported by Jamila Woods, Joji, I think that's who it is, Joji, Karja Bonet, I think that's how you pronounce that one. I'm having trouble here, folks. Jordan Rake, again, I'm slipping. O'Flynn and Miguel Atwood Ferguson. I made a late recovery there. Thank goodness. All of that results in a multi-textural, multi-flavoured sonic hamper of electro soul, jazzified synth rhythms, old-fashioned 90s era trance, remember that, and chart-tastic R&B vibes. Phew! Now, Alabama 3's lead singer, Larry Love, or if you prefer, Rob Sprague, same person, is here with O'Connell on Will You Be There on the Mount Malik label. This is a rootsy, folky-tinged singer-songwriter outing with enough grit to keep things interesting. And grit, after all, is the stuff that makes pearls. And now we have Madness. And after Madness broke up around, what was it, 1986 they broke up? Four former band members created The Madness. It's a bit like The Batman. Don't know if you're aware of that relatively new film. But anyway, The Madness, a self-titled album, it was rather different. It wasn't madness, certainly. It was something else. They sounded lost. They tried too hard. They were overproduced and rather formulaic in pop terms. And yet, and yet, for the fans, it's an essential part of the overall story. It's part of the band's evolution. And because of that, it should be heard. Not the best LP in the world, but fans need it for that narrative. Next we have Seth Lakeman, who is a dyed-in-the-wool folky, and he's back with 14 songs on the album Make Your Mark on the Honor Oak label. Now Lakeman is not afraid to bathe in the trad folk waters, but he's also happy to stretch his alt-dot folk and mainstream tendons, which is why he has a broad-based audience. Canny chap. Next, we're looking at the classic indie band, a time when indie really meant indie, The Wedding Presence and their ongoing project, 24 Songs. Now, 24 Songs presents two songs per month, every month, occupying the flip side of a single 7-inch single. So, that's 12 7-inch singles across a full year. The first two, or is it the first three? I think it's three now. Well, they're out now. The lead singer of Sleeper, Louise, is it Wiener? 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 Well, she's on the first single. Check out the link for the Project 24 songs down below. You can go to that link in the description and it will give you subscription details. Next up, we have Liz Westberg and her trombone, which, the pair of them, have created Yellow Map. This is a Danish-flavoured jazz outing. Her press talks about cool jazz and things like cinematic. And, well, I agree, really. There's a calming, considered delivery from Westberg that is immensely appealing. Yet, there's also complexity and rumination if your ears care to dig a little. And is it the last one? We have Soul Revivers, Nick Manessa, I think it is, and David Hill's Soul Revivers offer On the Groove from Acid Jazz. Music stemmed from the 2017 crime film project called Yardy. This is West London reggae of a cool, thoughtful and restrained kind. This is an album that stops, takes a deep breath, looks around and reports its findings. And no, I was wrong. There is one more left from Phono48, and I don't normally feature 12-inch singles in this spot, but this three-track disc offers a suitably hi-fi-esque name, Phono, so I couldn't resist. This is a soul cut called So Pure, created by photographer Dean Chalkley, and was created from scratch and recorded in 48 hours by six musicians who've never worked together before. Rather brave. 
This is a deep groove soul with jazzy edges that winks at classic times gone by. And that's your lot. Thank you very much for staying to the end of the video and you'll be wanting the answer to that trivia question. Let me just repeat it for you. And the question is this, in the United States there are gold discs, platinum discs, and then for the highest sales, diamond discs. Strictly speaking this is wrong because diamond is not a metal. The discs really should be named after which metal, the only one, more precious than platinum. And the answer, and this should be familiar to hi-fi fans, it is rhodium. There is a company called Black Rhodium. Lots of cables are terminated by rhodium, so it's a very hi-fi answer. The price of rhodium is volatile, but because it can only be mined in certain areas and can only be found in platinum ores, it remains the world's most precious metal. And as I say, thank you very much for sticking to the end of this video. I'm going to include down below in the description area lots of links for chapter headings if you want to navigate around the vid, and also selected contacts for some of the records and whatnot I've been talking about. If you'd like to also check out my Patreon page, that would be great. Keeps this channel going. Any support you can give is much appreciated. And there's also links to my Facebook group if you'd like to join that, and my website if you'd like to check that out too, and my social media links and platforms and what have you. All that jazz. Anyway, I'll be back with something hi-fi flavoured at the weekend and I'd love to have your company then. Until that time folks, bye bye for now.